Our beautiful city of Sydney is picture perfect on this day, the last day of September, grand final day. From the CBD, as the crow flies, it's just 16 kilometres over to the fabulous city of Sydney. And grand final day is lining up as one of the very best that we've ever had here. As I said, it is a bluebird day. It is the NRL's day of days. And first up, we have the VB Cup, New South Wales grand final. And it's going to be a beauty because these two teams share a rich history. The Balmain Ride Tigers and, of course, the Newtown Jets finish seventh and eighth, respectively, in the competition process before ripping through the final series to be here today. And now in the opening match, our callers will include and feature the 1981 Newtown Jets second row played in the grand final, none other than Philip Gould. It seems like it was only yesterday, doesn't it, Phil? But we know it wasn't. Also remember this time last year in the, uh, the Cup fan grand final, we featured uh, Jonathan Wright and also Josh Reynolds. They delivered that final pass to secure the, the uh, grand final Final for the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs and they got it in the dying seconds. Can they repeat it again today because play, both are playing in the big game. What a moment for them. In the meantime, plenty of happening here. NRL Grand Final Day right here on Nine's Wide World of Sports. We will be back in just a moment. Ball comes back. Last tackle Bulldogs. Maybe their last chance. Big chance for Ryan. He's over. Bulldogs have scored. Jonathan Wright This is Grand Final Day 2012. We're looking back at 1981, the decider between Parramatta and Newtown. And there he is, our very own Phil Gould. Ended, ended in injury as uh, Brad Fittler <laughs>, laughs in the background. But Gus, memories of 1981. He had a mighty game up to that point. Yeah, great memories. Can't believe it's so long ago, 31 years ago. And the Jets playing Parramatta in the Grand Final. Yep, it was a mighty game. I remember I snuck in in the halfway line with my brothers and here they are. It is uh, Balmain right Eastwood, and uh, they're in the mighty Balmain colours. Two foundation clubs today for the decider in the New South Wales Cup. Balmain and, of course, Newtown. Now, Newtown played on, 90, on that day in 1908, as did Balmain. And uh, just fantastic to see these two beautiful jerseys. jerseys. As Kenny mentioned before, a blue bird day out at Homebush. And a pretty famous name. We're going to see the Bulldogs in the grand final later on today. And Daniel Mortimer leads out Newtown. There they are, the mighty colours of Newtown. The Jets. Both sides have seven players at NRL experience this year. I watched them play last week against the Dogs. They were super impressive. Here's the team. This is how they'll line up. And Gus, if you could take us through the uh, Newtown Jets there. Yeah, a low for it. Fullback, Tupo and Carney on the wings. Tungavay and Vautu in the centres. Kara and Mortimer are the halves. The forward pack, Elaz, Bosden, Barrett, Masoy, Alamai, Louie. And on the bench this afternoon, Seluini, Fern, Cherrington and Puma. You've been a great quality football in the New South Wales Cup this year. We'll have a look at the Balmain side here. And Meany, we've seen Meany play a number of first grade games. Clark and Agar are on the wings. It's Davis and Simona in the centres. Tommy Humble will be 5'8". Nick Waters at halfback and Curran will lock the scrum. These three guys at the back, great workers. Farlow Harris, we've got Junior Moores and Ray Kashmir. Ma Sada Yusefa is the hooker and on the bench today for the Tigers. It is, uh, that's not an easy name to say, but it's Setu Manu Fagai, Anaya Avaro, Politoni and Chisholm. Paul Fletcher is the, co the coach of the Balmain oh boy, side. We're just about to get underway with the boot of Daniel Mortimer. 2012 Grand Final Day, and it's under beautiful conditions here at Homebush. And a charging run to start with from Ray Kashmir playing his final game today. You would expect him to go back to Wollongong and work in the mines as Junior Moores takes it forward and works his way over the 20. Beautiful Balmain Newtown jerseys for any lovers of retro rugby league. The dart out of dummy half from Yusefa. It just brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it, seeing these old jerseys go around. And a lot of people down here on the sidelines tied to the game from the old clubs. The Balmain Tigers and the Newtown Jets 
that have been keeping these clubs going for so long. There's Yusefa with the clearing kick. It goes down to a loafer, a loafer. And uh, he works his way back in crunch by three players. I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful day outside, but down on that pitch, I reckon it's about 8 or 10 degrees warmer than what it is anywhere else. It's, uh, it's quite oppressive down there, quite warm for the players. So this will be a test of endurance playing in the middle of the day. Justin Carney there with the run. It's very gusty, too blustery conditions for grand final day 2012. And uh, what a day we have for you here on the Nine Network as Newtown working out of their own territory with uh, Josh Alamai. And spent a lot of time in Newcastle. Not only 20 odd degrees, 12 o'clock would be a strange time to play footy for these boys as well. They normally play at 3 o'clock. They would have been up having their brekkie at 5, I'd say. Quite a disturbance to their normal routine. It was a nice finish their first set. And here it is, straight on to Daniel Mortimer. And uh, it'll go straight down the throat of Meany. Yeah, very warm conditions as Meany's taken down just a, a few metres shy of the 30. And they've got some big boys, Newtown. A couple of big boppers, like we know of Mossy Masoy. Others over the 115, 120 kilo mark as well. There's Ray Cashmere, the 32-year-old Ray Cashmere. That's right. It's been an incredible run from both sides. I mean, this was the first year that we changed the McIntyre system. And suddenly, in the New South Wales Cup, the team that qualified 7th and 8th have won their way through to the grand final. People were saying it was impossible to win a comp under the new system from down below. But we've got both 7th and 8th playing off in the big one. It's been an extraordinary final series. It certainly has in those two semi-finals we saw at Leichhardt. Big results as we see a little chip over the top from Waters and a loafer, a loafer will, uh, I'm not repeating his name twice, his Christian name and surname is a loafer, so a loafer I'm getting squared. it right. You also have a look at the, the Jets, the way they come into a gas. They beat the Cutters a couple of weeks ago by six points, they're a highly sorted team. And they beat North Sydney over at North Sydney Oval. Daniel Mortimer kicked a goal on the bell from about 35 metres out, 10 from the sideline to win the game. Well, it goes back further than that, Brad, because in round 25, if they didn't win in round 25, they wouldn't have made the eight. The competition was pretty close. It was only seven points covered the top ten teams. In round 25, they were down 25-18 with three minutes to go. Scored a try to get back to 25-24. Here we go. And then kicked a penalty goal from long range after the siren to win, to get into the eight. Is that Mortimer? Is it Mortimer kick? I think Jack Littlejohn um, kicked the goal, and he, he hasn't played for them since. So they've, ret they've retired him. <laughs> he, he was on an extended bench, Little John, and uh, got dropped off. But, but, but he's gone into immortality at the New Down Jets, I can tell you. He has. He'll be in the next show of Robin Hood. The, uh, that was a probably miscued kick from Daniel Mortimer. I did chat with him on Friday at the Bulldogs lunch, and he did mention how much the Newtown people have embraced him. As, uh, we see Kashmir come forward. They're, they're very, very uh, true to their, their, their Jets and blue bag heritage, aren't they, Newtown supporters? They embrace anyone who walks through Stanmore, mate. It's, uh, it's a great club, and people like Barry Vining that have kept it going all these years. Last played in the Premier competition back in 1983. Very sad to see them go, but that was the economy of the time. And these people have kept the club going out at the old Henson Park and the colours still go round. And they've been in quite a few grand finals over the last five or six seasons as well. They certainly have and uh, we mentioned earlier on that they're a foundation side and they were there in 1908. Quite ironically they played against the Houston at Wentworth Park, a place Brad used to train at, used to coach at and uh, yeah it's fantastic to see their colours going around in 2012. That's four. And they're due for a grand final victory too because they've had some heartbreaking <laughs> losses. Yeah, a couple of golden point losses against Parramatta and in that mammoth game. A thousand field goal attempts. Yeah. You see now. 104 minutes. 104 minutes. It was a marathon. There's a 40 20. Is that oh. <laughs> Daniel Mortimer. Inside 40. Yeah. He's just a class to that. It wasn't on the run. He had plenty of pressure on him. He had a defender to compete with. He sidestepped him twice, then found a little bit of space down the right hand touch line. Good chase from Waters. He steps him in the back rower. Great touch and just sneaks it inside the 20. He's a bloke that was playing first grade in the grand final a few years and it was a big part of the push for Parramatta to get there along with Jared Hayne and others. Yeah, he was, and he's quite a talented player. He's too good for this grade. He's too good for New South Wales Cup and there's 
a few players in that category out here, but it just shows you how difficult it is to stay in an NRL team. Um, but I think you'll be back. I don't think Daniel Mortimer's NRL career is over. There's an opportunity with Carney, of course, to play quite a number of first-grade games himself with the Raiders and the Roosters. They're just 12 metres out, Newtown. Grand final day, 2012. Alamai, big bustling fella. Alamai, we've been calling him since his days at Hunter Sports High up there in Newcastle. Just a few metres away, and this is Newtown on the attack. Big charging run from big Mossy Masoi. A metre away, three tackles gone. Newtown on the attack after a beautiful 40-20 from Mortimer. And it goes back to Daniel. They keep it alive now. There's Carney. He'll be wrapped up. Nine metres out. Four tackles gone. Newtown. Balmain right eastward. Oh, just juggled. That one managed to keep it. And Ray Cashmere pulls him to ground. So here's the last tackle for Newtown. Nil all. In the hands of Mortimer. There's the kick. Beautifully taken. Oh, what a try from Tupo. We saw him at the back end of the season in first grade. Beautiful feet, and he flies high for the first four-pointer. Newtown, 4-0 four over the Tigers. Lovely kick from Daniel Mortimer. Positioned it perfectly, and he gave his winger the flying run. Watch how he positions this so Tupo can get it at full flight. And the fella coming forward has always got the advantage in the leap. Gets high above them, plants it down, and the Jets will score first. This is always going to be a tactic. A couple well, there he is, Daniel Tupo. Fred, you've seen a lot of this young bloke, um, and he, we saw him in first grade, a lot of potential going forward. It's 4-0 uh, as Daniel Mortimer lines this one up. Yeah, a lot of people quiz, I think, why Sam Perra was let go from the Roosters. I think it was to make room for blokes like Tupo. And here is Daniel Mortimer, mm -hmm. in middle position, approaches the ball. Absolutely beautiful from Mortimer. A famous bulldog name. We'll see them in first grade later today. But it's Newtown, nine minutes gone, leads 6-0. What about Mortimer's touches? He's had the 40-20. He set up the set and laid on the beautiful kick. He had the big strength of Tupo to come through. Over the top of a guy. Too strong. My boys time it. Now, like I said, I, I can't believe that he's in our career isn't going to resume at some stage. There's a place for him in the game. As he gets a little older and matures. And That's one. I, I'm sure Get someone will pick him up. Things I've noticed too, Gus, when I've been down at the club, is his attitude's excellent. Every time you walk, he's got a smile on his face. He's on his way to training. Nothing seems to be a problem. Yeah, he's a wonderful young fella from brilliant pedigree. Of course, his dad, Peter. Uncles, Chris and Steve. And it's Newtown leading 6-0 in the grand final of the New South Wales Cup. Well, oh, a big run from Alamai, but they're offside, Balmain right eastward, and we'll see oh, no. the penalty. Already a number of Bulldog fans have come in and found their seats for the day, and there's even people sitting way up the back of, uh, of the eastern side of the grandstand there. They're way up, and they've got their I tickets. Hope they fall. Look at that. They've got their tickets, and they're there, so it shows you that we're... We're pretty much on sellout today. Because, uh, even the, the highest seats furthest away from the oval, there's people sitting in them. I hope they've got the tissues for the nosebleeds because uh, that's quite lofty up there, but that's how much they love their team. The crowd at the moment, Gus, is 8,972. I'm sure you knew that. Absolutely. So the crowds of these guys, they always say that at Henson Park, don't they? Even if there's 2,000, they always say there's eight and a half, nine. 8,972, Tim. Mortimer now. A loafer. They certainly started the better in this one. The grand final in New South Wales Cup. I speak of Newtown. They go the short side. They run from Cara because he's, he's not usually a 5'8", he's a hooker. Playing uh, at 5'8 today because of injury. There's Alamoy, steps off the left and... Pops a ball back. Nice ball, that one. And they're still on the attack. This is try time, is it? I think it is. Just check the We're going to have a look, of course. Comes. We've got the video referee in place today. Well, Penny Tungavay is claiming victory. He's doing the high fives and the head taps and the, and the hand slapping. So he feels as though he's got the ball to the ground. They kept the ball alive nicely there, the Jets. And Tungavay drives in under a, a body of... Tigers jerseys there, and it's a matter of whether or not the video referee can find it touching the line. I'm not sure that the referee has a view on this. Steve Clark and Phil Cooley in the video referee's box today. 
Does that come loose, Fred? No, I think he's got control, but I don't think it's on the line. It's, well, it's on the ground there, whether or not it's on the line. We'll that last shot we saw didn't... This will probably tell us if he's got to the line with it. There's a nice tiger foot in there. That's Sean. That's Mooney's foot. Is he just short? I think he's pulled up short. Sean Mooney, the captain, I think. Dug his foot in there nice and early. Well, Penny got up hand slapping and high fiving. He felt as though a little bit caught the chalk. Will they go back to ref's call? So much controversy about the benefit of the doubt over the course of the semi final series. And uh, we haven't seen him put it on the line yet. We haven't. No, no try for me. Penny, okay. Penny's got the best view. He thinks he got there, but I don't think they're going to take his word for it. Former West Tigers player, Penny Tungavay. And here it is, decision pending here. No try, as we thought no he pulled try, up boys. short. short. And it'll stay 6-0. Uh, but Newtown will still be on the attack here. Up Ten here. and a half minutes gone with a 6-0 lead. Up, up here, up here. And this will be tackle five. It's their last play option here, so Wait they're all me. lined Wait out to the me. left. And we might see another crossfield bomb Wait. here from young Mortimer. It's tackle five. Brad Barrett's just standing there. It goes through him and onto Mortimer. And there's the kick you speak of. Gus flying through oh. a couple of Newtown players. Is that a try? Knock on. It's a knock on. They'll go back to the 20. And uh, I think again, Carney knocked placement. it off. Brilliant placement. Just out of the top of Humble. The smaller of the outside men of the, of the uh, Bowman right side. See, the crowd at Henson Park is always 8, 9, 7, 2. They yes. announce it every time, but they justify it by saying there's 8 in the grandstand, 9 on the hill, and 72 <laughs> sitting in the cars. <laughs> oh, great memories. I remember catching the train with my dad and my brothers to Henson. What a wonderful place to watch footy. As we see the, the Tigers, they're on the halfway line. They trail six points to nil. Seventh and eighth in the decider here. And that's Junior Moores. It's one of the great grounds, Henson Park. You can go and park your car around the perimeter and sit on the bonnet and have your lunch and have a couple of cold ones while you watch the footy. There's Harris uh, with the headgear on. I used to utilise a lot of the drive and I used to take my re there. And we'd go and sit there and sit in the back of the tunnel. There. Hang on, hold the phone, as Rab says. Oh, almost something there for, for Balmain, but it was killed. play there from Newtown, but let's get back to you and Marie. What happened? <laughs> well, they took all the drive-ins away, so Newtown's the only place where you can go and park and get entertainment. So. Well, you're married with children now, so it all worked out. This is Newtown, and that is Tungavay, who thought he'd scored a try a short time back, but it wasn't his. The replacement hooker, Isaac Liu, tell you when he's starting on the bench, and he's been brilliant for Newtown off the bench the last few weeks. Alamai! Brought to ground in a strong tackle by Curran. Bosden. When Freddie was a young fella at Penrith, he used to borrow my car to take his girlfriends out on a date. Oh God, he wasn't using that mini bike that he got into trouble over. There's Cara at dummy half. He's normally a hooker. Gets to Mortimer, and there's the kick. This might have a bit too much on it. it won't cause any great strife for Newtown. They'll come back 20. to the 20. Is that true? They always came back clean. Grand final day 2012. Of course, we have the Toyota Cup coming up after this. In the centre line. And uh, the Tigers will be featuring in that. Then it's the Bulldogs and Melbourne Storm this afternoon from 4.30. That's Junior Moore's doing another hit up. Junior and I played for the same club side, Cambridge Park. Host of players came out of that club. Cardi, Brandy, Matty Guyer. Knock on. Come back tomorrow. And Junior Moore is probably another one of these players, Gus. That's too good for this grade. He's uh, played a lot of first grade. Huh? Right. I call him, call him this New South call Wales call 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 Cup competition, and, and indeed the Queensland it's Cup competition, no, clubs are realising more and more that this is a very important development arm for your NRL players. That the gap between Toyota Cup, the National Youth Comp, and and first grade is too great and that you really do need players to spend some time at this level as soon as possible if they're going to harden up and get themselves ready for NRL football. Well, there's a big balance. You get these kids coming through 20s. You would really want them to play in this New South Wales Cup side a couple of times before they get up to first grade. There is a big difference between a Toyota Cup and the New South Wales Cup. There's Carney. Uh, 
out. Justin. And some good news for Junior Moores. He only himself a contract in Melbourne next year. By a big, strong lad as we see Lou come forward. He'll be wrapped up three metres out from the, the Tigers line. Car at a dummy half. He shows it to Alamoy, goes himself. He what they've tackled well, Balmain right east. They've been under a lot of pressure. Last tackle here. Where's Mortimer? There he is there. The little kick through, beautifully placed. And uh, another outstanding piece of play from Daniel Mortimer. So that was smart from Mortimer because I'm sure his first option was to kick across field again, looking for the bomb into the corner. But the tight, Balmain raced up so quickly on him that he was able to quickly change his thoughts to a grubber kick. He got a bad pass. The defence was on him. So he, he just had the presence of mind to grubber kick it into the end goal. And they had the sorts of plays that sort of, you say, well, yeah, look, there's still Four, NRL the left in this kid. Center, you boys stay behind. They lead 6-0, Newtown. Here's a dropout. It's going to go almost the 50, and uh, Mossy Masoy. Well, who would you kick it to Boo! him? <laughs> oh, well, wait, boys, I wouldn't kick anywhere near Nine Mossy Masoy. Here's another one of the same dimensions. Alamai gets around one, and he'll be pulled down. 15 out, centre field. Blue picked up and dumped on his back. Bit of a change of tactics. He's got the 5 8 in a dummy half. The, the hooker's become a, a ball runner. It's on here, is it? Again, we see Batu. A loafer to Mortimer. Pops the ball. He didn't know it was coming his way, Mossy Masoy, but he, he revs the engine up and gets about five or six metres. Centre field final tackle, and there will be a penalty right in front He's of the post. Down, He's got his arm around the way. He's got his arm around the way. I disagree, Sean. Thanks. I disagree, Sean. That's finished. Yeah, no, no. We're not slowing it down near the line, mate. I'll talk to you later. No, but he's got I'll talk to you later, Sean. Sean, don't test me. Yeah, yeah, see, see you later. later. Don't test later. him, Sean. Later. I have to talk about that. See you later, Sean. Thanks. Five from five, Balmain are under this referee, Matt Noyan. Five from five. The last thing Sean wants to do yeah, is standing away from me, mate. make him angry. Yeah, and uh, they've decided not to take the two. They're going to keep playing on. There's Kara. Brad Barrett. And that's all Sean Meaning was looking to do, was to slow it up so they've got a bit of air in the lungs before they have to tackle again. They've been under immense pressure down here, so... He persevered. Good talk from uh, Tigers inside of his Meany, and that is uh, Alamai. He'll be just two metres short of the Tigers line. Plays the ball back to Kara. Good charge and run. Oh. Probably a little high. I think he's over there. Jack Bosden. Pretty lazy at attempt around the neck, and it's on here. But uh, nothing's going to change the scoreboard. It's the Jets 10. Balmain right Eastwood nil in the grand final of 2012. A yeah, nice second effort here from Jack Bosden. He was grabbed a little bit high with the initial contact, but you've got to do that near your own try line sometimes. No, no, no. Uh, he's down at the moment, but he's been rewarded with a grand final try in the New South Wales Cup, so I imagine he'll get to his feet and play on. But that's a, a big decision there by the Jets not to take the two points and extend their margin beyond six. They've decided to run it and on tackle two, Bosden taken around the neck. Comes free of the tackle, races in and gets over the line. Good try. And Daniel Mortimer has made no mistake. He was adjacent to the left upright. And uh, there it is, easy as you like. 12 points to nil. Newtown now lead the Tigers. I was down at Leichhardt on Sunday and watched uh, the Jets beat the Dogs and Jack Bosman scored the exact same try. And it was only two years ago, actually, I watched him play in his debut game for the Dragons, where at the other end of the field he scored the exact same try again. He is a great hole runner. Really leads him near the goal line. They've uh, mixed their results this year, these two. And uh, down on the sideline is Darren Lockyer. Let's bring in uh, Lockyer That's for his comments. Hey, Lock. Thanks, boys. Uh, look, these, these two teams wouldn't have played in these warm conditions for, for quite a long time. So it's taking its toll on the Tigers because the Jets have had most of the football, and I think that would have been the reason why they took the tap then because the Tigers look tired. Today is all about just keeping a simple hold on the ball. As we speak, there's a mistake. Yeah, sure is. Uh, as if Murphy's Law was uh, playing out there. And Jake Clark is a chance for uh, Balmain right Eastwood. They're 11 out. They trail 12 nil. Big charging run from this number 14. Set to Marni Fanai. 
going to be a very talented player with a big future and a massive fella. He's humble. Shows inside, goes outside the waters. Meany, good ball from Meany. Two metres out now. Balmain right eastward. Davis ends up in the hands of Kashmir. Lose round his legs. Elaz over the top. They trail 12 nil Waters. Humble. Good feet, Tommy Humble. We've seen him a lot in first grade with Parramatta and the West Tigers. They work at this side. Little chipping kick, charge down. And Alamoy will come up with it. Alamoy, rather. And uh, that's a good result for Newtown. They look quite sharp there, the Tigers. It was their first time in possession of the ball, but they, they asked a few questions there. And the Newtown Jets will be well advised to keep them away from their end of the field, judging by what we saw there. I suppose you've got to give the Jets' defence a wrap as well. The ball went from one side to the other. Halfback brought it back to the centre. Had another couple of shots. And the defence stood up under pressure. Another drop ball. Yeah, Jack Bosden, the try scorer, has dropped the ball. And uh, the scrumble pack in a pretty good position for the Tigers. Yeah, on the occasions I've seen the Tigers this year when Tom Humble has played, he's been the man. He's a little bit good for this grade as well. He's another one of those fellas with plenty of NRL experience and um, he could easily play NRL in the seven or no, six jersey not. in a lot of sides. But uh, some good, strong defence there shows that the Tigers are still looking to claw their way back into this. But I think Tom Humble is the man for the Tigers. They're looking to be the creative one. He works a scrum humble and uh, ends up in the hands of Tim Simona, who played a lot of first grade uh, this year. Not big, but he's quick. And that's Farlow. They trail 12 nil, But the Tigers have had the best of the running in the last five minutes. It's humble now. Goes himself and will be pulled down by Mossy Masoi. Tackle three, boys. Tackle three, and there's an injury. Gus has just put the mock on Tommy Humble. Now the last two times he's got the ball, Tommy, he's ran the ball. They had wonderful shape out the back, the Tigers there. Hey, he's good, Brad. I, I like the way he attacks the line. He backs himself. And I think from his experience playing at fullback, you know, he's got no fear about running into the line because they spend a lot of their time bringing the ball back and getting belted by people. I think he's rolled an ankle here, yeah, right underneath there. It's gone in underneath Junior Moores and... Uh, he seems to be okay. He'll try and walk this off. That could have been nasty. But he'll attack the line. He'll, he'll show the ball and dig into you and, and make sure you keep he keeps you on his mind. Warm conditions not far ahead with Tom Humble, of course. Uh, spent his young life up in North Queensland. And it's Balmain on the attack here. Balmain right eastward. And Meany again. Oh. He's run straight behind one of his players on, and sort of given up on it. Last tackle, Balmain right eastward. They trail 12 nil. Grand final day 2012. Back to Waters. Nicely placed kick. Oh, beautifully taken by Carney. To the 20. To Lovely the 20. take up above the pack. Yeah, it's nice work from Carney. You notice how he got his hands up in the air extended and wingers in rugby league are being encouraged more and more to learn to catch the ball in this technique rather than waiting to come to their chest, get their hands above it and grab it in two hands. Just getting back to the history, you go, go Freddie, and I'll tell you a really nice stat and a tick about uh, uh, arguably the oldest oh, hey. first grade player one around. One on one strip, knock on. One on one strip, knock one on, on he strip, said. Knock on. And, uh, Scrum, new town feed. You're talking about Justin Carney. There's one bloke who has to get his hands above his head. He's as wide as he is tall. He's a damaging runner. You got to say, like you think you'd be putting the ball on top of him every time. He was fantastic there under pressure. And the Jets come over there. Well, here are the scrums. Yeah, the scrums just about to pack. Well, our stats guru David Middleton has had a text message through this morning from a, a young bloke called Luke, whose grandfather Joe Wade is arguably the oldest first grade player still alive. He's just about to turn 97. He was born six months after the landing in Gallipoli. Used to pack down with Bumper Farrell for Newtown, and he's watching this one. Joe Wade, nearly 97 years of age, and he's watching in Lithgow. As we see Newtown work it out of their own territory, and he'd been pretty happy with the results so far. 
in this one. There he is, Mossy Masoy. He coached, coached him quite a bit in first grade, Brad. He was coming through as a young fella. He's a damaging player. Back to Mortimer. Mortimer goes for a little chip kick when the defence was on him. And it's tidied up eventually by uh, David Harris with the white headgear on. And uh, they'll now work it out, Balmain. A few significant interchanges here for the New Down Jets. Nafi Seluini is into the game. He'll go into dummy half. And Anthony Charrington, a young man who I've had a lot of hopes for for a long time, but has just been absolutely dogged by injury. The number 16 is a very good player. And so the Tigers going to their bench. And starting front rower, Josh Alamai, gets a spell. Yeah, seluini has been outstanding, hasn't he, for Newtown the, the past few weeks. Of course, played with Penrith. He's got a lot of ability. And they're on the last tackle, halfway line. Waters, with the kick, it'll uh, be taken pretty comfortably by Justin Carney, this pocket rocket. <laughs> yeah, as we go through the two sides and look at the players that are of NRL standards or have played NRL, it's why this competition needs far greater profile than it has. And again, there's arguments and, and thoughts of throughout the league that the New South Wales Cup needs greater profile. Much of the, the profile goes to the NYC, the National Youth Comp, because it's the one on pay TV and is the one more seen by the public. And these fellas play at grounds and, and venues away and from the sight and mind of the normal fans. People wouldn't realise that the New Down Jets are the feeder club to the Sydney Roosters. And so there are a lot of Roosters players out here in this lineup that sort of get lost in the New South Wales Cup and people don't get to see them play all that often. It's one of the hardest things to do with you. You've got a player like an Anthony Terrington who you're either trying to bring back or might be re trying to regain his form. He'll train a couple of days with the Roosters and then have to head back over to Newdown who train in the afternoons due to a lot of these fellas having jobs. To, I need to I trying need to, to keep them motivated. There. Back here, boys. Tommy Humble just walks off boys, the field at the here. moment. It's not good news. Hopefully he can go in there and the doctor can work some magic. But yeah, keeping their keeping them motivation up, going back to Newdown each boys, week, boys, makes it really tough. Well, I've been out to Windsor to watch the, the Windsor Wolves play against their opponents, and there might be as many as a dozen first graders out there in both the sides, and they're playing in front of small crowds and you know, cold, wet Saturday nights. And, um, it's... You know, it's a great competition for those clubs, but for the for the individuals involved that have come back from the NRL, it's it's pretty hard to take to lose that recognition and that uh, people don't know that they're in. And for kids too, coming out of the NYC, I mean, there are a lot of kids who finish their their under twenties uh, apprenticeship and aren't quite ready for the NRL, so they go back into New South Wales Cup. And again, for most people, most fans, they're out of sight, out of mind. Yet two years later, they can come forward. And, and in fact, Penrith's season, Penrith Panthers NRL season this year relied upon a lot of fellas who'd had a lot of experience in the New South Wales and Queensland's Cup. Fellas like Josh Mansour and Ryan Simpkins and Matt Robinson, Mitch Haychurch, and these fellas, Etu Wyselli, all came through and did a great job in the NRL because they'd been hardened up for, for a couple of years playing in this overage competition, which again takes us back to which is the best development process for these players. As we see Justin Carney take it forward, and the, the other big point that we've all spoken about in the past is that they, those players that mature so much between 20 and, say, 23, because some players don't get out to their true physical or um, footballing potential until their early 20s. Absolutely. The other thing is, Gus, I'll ask you, is from a coaching point of view, as Anthony Sheridan takes his first knock, he just stands, takes three blokes to drag him down. He still stands. Finally gets taken down. Paul Fletcher and Greg Madison, the respective coaches of the two teams, they've been in the semi-finals the last five years. How tough a job, Gus, would it be? Oh, there's the break. Make a break. It's oh, a lot forward. Yeah, it is. Ahmed Elaz, not much of him, but a beautiful break. And oh, he's oh. dead. There's, an, there's the problem. There's a shepherd and uh, an obstruction. He's called here. And the penalty goes the way of Balmain. Had to sort of put his blinker on and turn right. Ahmed Elaz found some space. We've seen a loaf for a loaf of speed already. 
Nice footwork. Gets away from two would-be defenders. Comes off the right foot. Yeah. Good call by the referee. Great bit of work by the lock forward. Just saying, Gus, from a coach's point of view, how tough is it dealing with these players coming back and kids on the way up? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the coaches of these New South Wales Cups teams probably only get one session in a week with their side at, uh, at full strength or with the side that they're going to play with that weekend. And even then, uh, you know, players are taken out at the last minute to stand by for first grade sides or you know, the NRL coach pulls them up as an 18th or 19th player on trips away. So... This competition was extremely close. Oh, here we go, Balmain right eastward. Open spaces. Is that Masada Yosefa going to score one metre away? What a tackle! That was an outstanding piece of defence from Alofa. It's still alive here for Balmain right eastward. A big run and he's over. Our man Avu Setu Manu Fanai. Over for a four-pointer. I won't pointer. be saying that, Timmy. Up to you, Gus. Well, that's a reward for some uh, long periods of defence here from the Balmain right side. They've been on their line for a lot of the game and they got a little bit of a break there with the Shepherd and, and no try ruling and they've been able to bring it back down the other end of the field and on very limited possession, if they kick the goal, they're only going to find themselves six points behind. Now, I've bet everyone I can get through the game without having to say this young man's name. So the 14 scores a try. <laughs> There he is, uh, Setu Manu Fangai, and uh, a lot of potential, this young guy. He's a big lump, and uh, as we saw there, he can motor. How do you say his first name? Is it Ava? Ava. Ava. Ava, that'll do, mate. He's, now, he... he's now Ava forever. OK. You can run with that as Sean Meany, the captain of Balmain, approaches it. It looks like a beautiful kick. It's straight over the black dot. Let's oh, get down to the sideline. He missed it. <laughs> Out to the Where left. Where are you looking? Out to the left. Show you called the black dot. Oh, slow down. Someone was showing me a card. I'm looking at the for time. another dot. Is there another dot over and there? And all the cameras went down as we go down to Darren Lockyer. He missed the kick, by the way. Yeah, the back end of the Tigers. We want to have this for a pass. I mean, as all good hookers do, they, they back their forwards up. But that's what created the bus, which set up the try. And from there, they kept their composure to get the ball over the line. Just on Tommy Humble, boys. He's um, got an ankle injury. They're assessing it, and hopefully he'll be back. But that's uh, too Don't strong from, from that far out. That's how much faith I have in Sean Meaney. Brad Fittler won't let us leave that one down. <laughs> Great combo there from the two pen, two ex Penrith boys, Masada and Junior Moores. So it's 12 points to four. Newtown over the Tigers. Grand final day 2012. We have the Toyota Cup with the Raiders and West Tigers. And then the big one tonight, it's the Melbourne Storm and Bulldogs from 4.30. As they work it out. And that same man again, Ava, or Ava, as Gus has christened him. That's three. Stand up for him. Oh, oh. Here Dane Chisholm is on the field now. Of course, Tom Humble's off injured. As Curran takes it forward, last tackle. They just look a little bit brittle here, the New Down Jets. They've had all the running, but uh, a couple of back-to-back -back sets of six in defence. They get a very different look about them. Yeah, beautiful taken by a loafer. And there's Carney. Got some speed for a chunk, hasn't he, Fred? He goes hard. Justin Carney, don't worry about him. Got a little opportunity there. Vartu is coming back on side. If he's a little bit quicker, there's plenty of space on the outside of Carney. Both of Sally Winnie. Yes, yeah, Sally Winnie. And uh, he's played well, Elaz. He's already made 16 tackles and made that break down there before. We almost, where he almost uh, set up a try and it was called back. Back to Mortimer. For six minutes remaining in the first half, New South That's Wales four. Cup, Newtown lead the Tigers 12 points to four. Absolutely pristine day, isn't it? I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky. This field will be hard and fast and dry for the Melbourne Storm and the Bulldogs when they turn up later. The boys will be back at their motels at the moment. I'd imagine just about to have a little bit of lunch and maybe go for a walk, a few of them maybe a little bit of a lie down. Before they jump on the bus to come out later. It was a good run by Jake Always Clark. enjoyed the afternoon lie down. Did you like that? Yes. <laughs> Two, now 12. 
Simona plays the ball back to Agar. Brad, 5.15 kickoff in the in the NRL today. When would you like to get here as a player? Pretty much two hours was always the guide. I think on the games where you grand finals where you sort of walk in, everything's done for you on grand final day in big game, so you sort of sneak it up towards an hour and a half sometimes, but generally that two hours before the game, some players like to come He's meaning, Fred! He's five metres away. We'll get back to your uh, grand final traditions in just a second. Last tackle, it's Balmain right Eastwood. And they spread it out. Put this... Oh, he treated like a precipice. Oh, Justin Carney. Jake well Clark, and well done, uh, Justin Carney. Back to the grand final day for you. Hold, hold, yeah, always... Hold, go. Around that two hours, hour and a half. I've got to say, Gus, there was times in origin two, where... Move, hold, go. And, and the big thing is, of course, today is 4.30. Make sure you're watching from 4.30. We've got all good Charlotte. We've got a wonderful uh, stack of entertainment in the build-up to the game. She's a show on all day today. It's grand final day, Timmy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know start of origin we've been there. I remember a game in Queensland where we, we only dropped in about 45 minutes before the big game. The whole story of the week was going out there and... Get in the cash and just go in there to do business, and that's what we did. We went up there 45 minutes before the game, dropped in, we did our strapping at the ground, and um, and ended up getting the money that night. So, still lost. But especially today, it'd be a beautiful afternoon to get out and watch a bit of footy. That's the second charge down, the second one with a head. Have you ever seen two charge downs in a row? There's a third! <laughs> and there he is! It's a record! Gus's man, Ava We've Gardner. got a record! In Jersey 14. Centre of the field, Balmain on the charge here. Junior Moores pops the ball back. And there's uh, our try scorer, Ava Setu Manu Fanai. Ava, if you wish, as Junior Moores is pulled up. 10 metres away from the Newtown line. 12 4, it's a tight one. They split their results this year. One to Newtown, one to the Tigers, fourth tackle. Under three minutes to half time here as Waters a little kick through. Waters, is that a try? The referee goes across. He's going to go upstairs to Clark and Phil Cooley. They'll make the judgment on this one, but uh, from the naked eye, Brad, your thoughts? Yeah, I think it is. Nathan Waters went to the line. He saw the defence had come up. He dropped it behind the line. I'm not sure who dropped it from Newdown, but someone had an opportunity. I think it's Mortimer over there. And he sort of dragged it with his feet, I think, Meany. There's Mortimer had a little shot at it, dragged it with his feet, and he gets his left hand to it. Unless he's knocked it on prior, this will be a try. I'll sell you when he lost it, oh, knee. Well, well, no, I don't think he's touched it there. And try. It's a try. He's a, he's a solid player, isn't he, Meany? We've seen him come in and fill the role in first grade and the captain here looks like he's got himself a four pointer as we go up and look from the video referee's perspective there's a try 12-8 well they've done really well here the Balmain Ride Tigers really well first 20 minutes was dominated by the Jets had a lot of possession and in the warm conditions the Tigers were looking a little bit bedraggled, but as soon as they've started to get a bit of possession, it's Newdown that have looked vulnerable. And whilst the tries come from a grubber kick, you felt that physically the Tigers were getting on top close to half time. And if Meany can kick this goal, there'll only be two points of difference at the break. So I'm going to concentrate on this kick and then we're going to go down for a uh, sideline interview. Well, Timmy, if you watch the linesman there, they've got flags. They'll put them up oh, if it's a goal or they'll wave them away <laughs> if it's not. Why don't, why don't you send the email so, now? Wait, put it set, put it on a tape and a disc here too and just keep sending it to me every week. Here it is. You it watch, is 12 the, the linesman will give you, The linesman will give you a guide here, Timmy. Don't, don't make a mistake today, Gus. Here he is, Meany. A minute 50 left on the clock. It's been a... A great comeback from his side. The try scorer, of course, the captain. They pause. The touch judges' flags are in the air. It is 12 points to 10, and Erin Molan has a special guest. Hey, Timmy, I'm here with the very happy Tigers legend, Paul Siren, and they're hitting back. What have they need to do in the second half to keep it going? Yeah, look, just ball control too. I mean, if, if, if you asked me 10 minutes ago, we'd be behind 12-10. I'd, you know, I'd be over the moon. So they've done really well to, uh, to fight back, and it's, you know, big second half, control the ball, no silly penalties. Definitely. Now the big one, who's your tip? 
Oh, I think the dogs just might get there by four. Paul, thank you. Enjoy the game. Back to you, Timmy. Thanks, Aaron. You'd be pretty happy with this result. Zero, of course, the Chief Executive Officer um, at Balmain Ride Eastwood. And uh, looking forward to seeing his son returning next year. He is a future superstar, Curtis. Struggle with injury at the back end this year. Only 50 seconds left in the first half, so the Tigers will get last say. Jets have just got to be concentrating here because sometimes you can concede tries back to back at this stage of the game. Good piece of play from Tim Simona. And they look keen, the Tigers. They're ready to try and get one. There's always going to be a problem for Newtown. They've got a lot of big boys in the middle, and it's a warm day. There's a big problem with Jack Bosden. He's come to the sideline holding his arm. Might be a broken forearm. We'll check it out. Here's a try, score, try scoring opportunity for Balmain right Eastwood. Gus mentioned the, the, the amount of times that a try is scored straight after another, and there's only 14 seconds left on the clock. Still alive. Still alive. Good defence from Newtown. Last tackle. This will be the final play of the first half. It's Balmain right Eastwood through Waters. Waters charged down from Mortimer, and he cleans it up. It'll go to the break. It is the Newtown Jets 12, Balmain, Wright Eastwood 10. We'll go to the break, and what about the performance this year of the brilliant Bulldogs forward pack? Sam Cassiano, 133 kilos. They'll be up front and centre in tonight's NRL Grand Final. I'm loving the way these Bulldogs forwards pass the ball to each other on the advantage. Isn't that a picture? That's the ANZ Stadium. It's half time in the BB Cup. It's the Newtown Jets 12 leading the Tigers 10. And they are building up towards the big game later on this afternoon. And right now joining me, Sam Thido. Sam, uh, lovely to have you aboard. And uh, it's, it's going to be a special day for your good mate, Petro Sivanasiva, because we're going to say farewell to him. And what an ornament and what a good teammate he's been for you. Yeah, he's been a, a huge influence on uh, the way I play football and, and the way I am as a footballer. Uh, he's going to be uh, uh, missed uh, a lot, especially up there in, uh, in Brisbane. But uh, I uh, feel very honoured and privileged that I had a lot of time to play football with him. Yeah, he, was, he is a mighty man. There's no doubt about that. And I love, love this final game. And I love his last appearance. And this was just so, so good. You guys were so good to him. And the crowd were just paying homage to a wonderful player. He had a great farewell there. Uh, he was very heavy to pick up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I uh, actually had cramps in your back. You can see uh, Alex Klein and myself laughing there. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it was a great farewell for Petra out there. And hopefully uh, he gets a few cheers here today. Yeah, and uh, I tell you what he is terrific with. He's terrific with kids, and he will make a great ambassador if the uh, NRL or somebody picks him up and goes out there and, uh, uh, and tries to influence children to play the game because he's, he's, he's very good with them. He's got plenty of practice for kids of his own, but uh, <laughs> yeah, great ambassador for, ambassador for rugby league and a, a great man. OK, well, you're not going to be playing the test. You're uh, still injured. They've got the test in a fortnight's time. Straighter up against the, uh, uh, the, the Kiwis. What's the problem? What's the issue? I uh, had a uh, shoulder operation, got it all fixed up. Uh, uh, but uh, that game is up in towns in my hometown, so I'm very disappointed I can't uh, play in that one. But uh, hopefully everyone comes out to watch that game. It's going to be a big one. OK, you're also new career direction. You'll be commentating on the uh, Toyota Cup. How do you feel you're going to go? I'm going to do my best. <laughs> uh, I'll have to go upstairs and practice a few names, I think. But uh, um, we'll, we'll see how things go. I think you'll do OK. Thank Good. you. Thank you very much, Sam. <laughs> Back to you, Peter. Thank you very much, Ken. Yeah, hostilities underway here at ANZ Stadium, halftime in the New South Wales Cup. Last season, the two lower grade games, absolute cliffhangers. Well, we're setting the same trend today with the Newtown Jets in front by two at the break. And what is a big day for everybody? And I'm joined by Glenn Munsey. We nearly didn't get here, Glenn. Um, I've never oh, seen you solid. flustered before, you're but there's solid. a door that says pull. We spent five minutes <laughs> of you trying to push, but we made it. Yeah, we got here, Pete. What yeah, have you got for us? Thanks for that. <laughs> very, very big day for tab.com.au. The grand final day. We're actually betting on this New South Wales Cup game. I can tell you that Newtown, $1.50 favourites over Balmain Right Eastwood, two fifty, a five and a half line at half time. Toyota Cup coming up. The Raiders, one forty-five favourites in from one fifty-five. The West Tigers out to two seventy-five. A five and a half point line on that one. We'll bet live on that game right through. And then of course at quarter past five, the National Rugby League Grand Final. The Dogs, $2.05 outsiders. The Melbourne Storm at $1.80. A two and a half point line there. We'll look at the try score. I can tell you from one o'clock this afternoon, these prices, each and every player will have a 25% bonus put on him. But we've got a couple of players there. Ryan Hoffman, Sam Perrett, Frank Pritchard and Gareth Widdup. And also betting on the Clive Churchill medal. Very, very popular. Cooper Cronk, he is the outright favourite now. But I'm sure plenty of people want to back Benny Barr. 
Carter, Ryan Hoffman and James Graham, who's been in stellar form for the uh, Bulldog side. But plenty of betting opportunities right throughout the day at your local tab, of course, online, even here at the ground. But just uh, it'll be a big day, peak. But as we say all the time, do it responsibly. That's it, Glenn. Thank you. You should leave now. Just make sure we do get downstairs in time. Big second half coming up here for Newtown and the Tigers. The Jets in front, 12-10. But no doubt going into the sheds, the Tigers have the momentum. As we make our way through to the big one this evening where Canterbury will take on Melbourne, the Storm hoping for a couple of their superstars again to combine and show the way. To Grand Final Day 2012, what a beautiful picture that is from the chopper. The city of Sydney, the Emerald City, and it's Newtown. Two great names in rugby league today, Newtown and the Tigers doing battle, and it's a two-point lead to Newtown. And uh, they are being led out again by Daniel Mortimer, who had a cracking start to the game. And uh, they have the two-point spread over Balmain right eastward. The New Down Jets coming out. Of course, New Down Jets are the feeder club to the Sydney Roosters. And I would just like this take the opportunity to send out best wishes to the family of Janal Rutledge. Janal, very passionate Roosters supporter, wonderful lady who we've known for a long time as being involved with the Roosters and the Roosters Supporters Club. Janal passed away very suddenly earlier in the week. And... Uh, it came as a shock to everybody, but to her family and friends and to all Roosters supporters everywhere, uh, deeper sympathies and uh, the very best wishes uh, at your loss. And uh, oh, there'll boys, be no one no like Janelle, I can tell you. Very passionate young lady. It is the Jets through Daniel Mortimer receiving that one. They lead 12-10. And Andrew Pern. He's a steady worker. He's off the bench for Newtown. And this is what your season comes down to. Um, you play all year with your teammates. And you work through your semi-finals. You get to the big day, the grand final. And it's an important day for all these players. And you turn around for the second half. There's two points of difference. The game's in the balance. And there's no better place you'd rather be. It's all there to be decided. On a cracking day, Aceluini finds some space down the short side. Final tackle, Newtown. They lead the way and they're on the attack. An unorthodox kick and it doesn't quite come off. And uh, I don't know whether that's what the coach would have wanted from uh, Francis Vayatu. Might have been better in the hands of Mortimer. But here are the Tigers. Nice run from Agai. Centre field through Josh Davis. Just two points in it. Seventh and eighth playing in the New South Wales Cup decided today. We'll have the call of the Raiders and the West Tigers. Then it is the big one. The Melbourne Storm and the Bulldogs. Final tackle. Balmain right eastward. Shipping kick over the top from Dane Chisholm. It's tidied up. This goes to show the importance of your fifth tackle options. We saw Tom Humble. He left the field with that uh, lower leg problem. He's getting a bit of a fitness test as we speak. No doubt pivotal for the uh, Tigers' efforts today. Let's get down to Darren Lockyer for an injury update. Darren? A little bit of good news for the Tigers. Humble has returned back to the sideline. Looks like he will take the field again. But bad news for the Jets with Jack Bosden with a suspected fractured forearm. I don't think he'll be taking uh, part in any further in this game. Can we get him one of those Shane Webkey arm guards, Lockie? Have you got any of them in your bag, mate? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Webby got that one out of the wheelie bin. <laughs> I think we just saw Salula Huma run, and he is a massive man uh, for Newtown. A lot of wraps on him. The number 17 for Newtown, as we see the Tigers working it out. Just a couple of minutes old in New South Wales Cup 2012 Grand Final day as one of these teams will be uh, doing the victory lap today. 
Well, they've been so close, the New Down Jets, in recent years. They've beaten in two Golden Point Grand Finals, one of them the longest rugby league match I think ever played. 104 minutes it took before went before got their money. Chisholm almost got through, poked his head through, last tackle now through the Tigers. And Meany's up in the front line, puts the kick, and he's looking for Harris. There's a knock-on, there's a double knock-on, and a scrumble pack. Then Bowman, first one, Newtown. So you won't be very happy, Daniel Tupu. That was right on the bread basket. Once again, the kicking game of Waters. Putting pressure on the on the Jets. Comes out with quite a simple drop there. Nice pressure from the 12, Harris coming through. But he'll be disappointed. Very catchable. Yeah, so they'll get the loosened feed here in Newtown. Well, no, the Tigers will feed the scrum, but... Uh, because of the double knock-on, of course, Newtown with the first indiscretion. They work at the short side, and that is Davis. Davis is wrapped up. Just two points behind this Tigers team, and there's Harris. Good will all game. Politoni to dummy half. There's Waters. Waters to Chisholm. Chisholm goes himself, Chisholm. He'll score. He's been off the bench and played well since he's got there. Dane Chisholm, jersey number 20, and they go to the front, the Tigers. They lead 14-12. He's got a bit of speed, this kid, Dane Chisholm. And he just gives a little, nice little show and go on on the outside. He got himself where his numbers were right. He was able to put the defence in two minds. And the ball will come across, a little bit of show to the inside, show to the outside, double pump, and then surges through the hole able to get the ball down and the Tigers hit the lead. There he is, Dane Chisholm, the try scorer. He did it all himself, showed beautiful footwork and, uh, and it's taken them in front. His junior football club up the Mullumbimby Giants. His first grade debut was for Melbourne. And they're in the lead. The kick misses. It's a two-point spread. This time the Tigers lead the Jets 14-12. We saw a bit of this in the first half. And I think the Tigers look far more dangerous with the ball at the attacking end of the field than, than the Jets do. And even though they were down 12-0, they had one set of six at the New Downs end of the field. And I thought, gee whiz, you know, if they get some ball, they've got points in them. And here Chisholm, lovely little show and go there. Stay on, boys. And the New Down defence was in two minds. So... For the Jets, this game is all about territory. They've got to be up the other end of the field. It doesn't look like they can hold the Tigers from close range on their line for too long. Yeah, Dane Chisholm, he's very quick. Played in the Melbourne Toyota Cup winning team of 2009. Scored 17 tries this year. He's a good show and go, and they lead 14-12. So the grand final, Gus, I've got to ask you, Bulldogs, you coach them to a, a premiership. How's it going to go this afternoon, slash this evening? Well, it's it's quite extraordinary. And then we see a little bit of a line break here from the Tigers. You ask anyone's opinion on this game, other than a Storm or Bulldog supporter, and they're really undecided. For every case you can mount for the Bulldogs, you can mount an equally good case for the Melbourne Storm. It's the most evenly matched grand final that I've seen for a long, long time. Um, I think it's a matter of who gets their game on. And because they've got such different styles, I think the team that gets their game on might win handsomely. I think the Melbourne could win by a lot. And I, or I think the Bulldogs could win by a lot. It's just the way it is. I've got recollections of the Melbourne Storm beating Parramatta here a few years ago where they really targeted... Fellas like Mortimer and Jeff Robinson on the edge with their big fellas. And I think that Keating behind, and boys, Reynolds are going to get a real work out of this afternoon. Their, their game will come down to their defence because the likes of Sika Manu and Proctor and, and Hoffman are not going to miss them. So that's the key for the Bulldogs for mine. If they can hold on to Melbourne Storm's edge players, um, they get in with a chance. Gosh, you talked about being evenly matched. The only place they're not evenly matched is in big game experience. Is that going to count today? Well, it generally does, Brad, doesn't it? You know, um, The thing for me, the Bulldogs club, grand finals are in the woodwork. They very rarely lose them. In fact, I think they've lost 
one of their last seven grand final appearances. They've just got a great record. So the club itself won't be panicking or, or overawed by the grand final uh, build-up. The Melbourne Storm have got those three great players and they have won seven origins in a row. I mean, they know how to dismantle a side. Um, so I keep leaning back a little bit towards them. But if, if the Bulldogs come out and get their game on, they're quite capable of blowing Melbourne away. And it has been a brilliant coaching job by Des Hasler throughout the course of this year, turning so many players around. Aaron Molan has a special guest on the sideline. Thanks, Timmy. I'm here with Raiders coach David Ferner. Two at a cup boys playing against the West Tigers. How will they go? Uh, look, I think they'll go pretty well. The preparation uh, uh, by Andrew Duneman and the coaching staff has been faultless, as, he, uh, as he's told me. But, um, look, it should be a good game. They haven't beaten the Tigers uh, this year, so this is probably the one there that they, uh, they need to beat them. Something Canberra really prides itself on is bringing juniors up through the ranks. Who are a couple of big name players in there we should see in first grade over the next couple of years? Oh, look, there's a number of players there. Uh, some have already played first grade. Edric Lee, uh, young Jack Ahern there at fullback. Um, you know, you've got guys like uh, you know Shannon Boyd at the front row. But there's there's always some players there that uh, that, that surprise you as they come on. So, I mean, this sort of performance there today or this experience would be great for those kids. The big one. Who's your tip? Yeah, look, it's going to be close. So I think the Bulldogs have a, have a style there to, to penetrate uh, Melbourne's defence. Uh, Melbourne play like they have the last two weeks. I think it'll be Melbourne tonight. Thanks, Dave. Good luck next season. Timmy, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. And uh, a great coaching job by David Ferner this year. And, of course, the Toyota Cup Grand Final Raiders-Tigers. And uh, that'll follow this game with Andrew Voss and the commentary team. I want to say one bloke we won't be able to watch today is Jack White. I'm very disappointed. When Jared Croker broke his... Uh, I think he probably broke his, broke his arm. I think he was ruled out of the last game. Jack Wyden got caught up and therefore was ineligible to play in the Toyota Cup. It was his cheekbone. That's right. He's going to go dead, clearly. Yeah, a bit too much gas on that from Meany. But yeah, he is a player, Jack Wyden. He's only 18, 19 years old and he has rep footy ridden all over him. Yeah, that'll be a cracking game, the Toyota Cup. And of course, tonight we were talking about the Bulldogs and Storm. And uh, make sure you're watching on tomorrow night. I haven't missed this at all. The must-see conclusion of underbelly badness with Anthony or will Anthony Parrish be punished or will he walk free? Don't miss the epic underbelly finale. The acting from Anthony LaPaglia has been unbelievable. Monday 8.30 on Channel 9. The underbellies have been absolutely sensational. I haven't missed a minute of any of them but this one is particularly gripping. I don't want it to end. He's bad Parrish. I love watching Matty Noble. I played footy with Matty Noble. He's been great too. He's been a little star to watch for. Oh, here we oh, go. Here's a try time. It is. Bautu. Francis Bautu found a, a gap, poked his head through, and Newtown back in front. It is 16-14. Newtown over the Tigers. We're getting back into a bit of underbelly. A little bit of the underbelly. Well, one of the series was based around the Newtown area and Bumper Farrell made a, an appearance and uh, Newtown 16-14 over the Tigers. Yeah, some nice play out wide. Just got him into a gap there and he surged towards the line. Pretty simple stuff, really. Nice hit back from the Jets. They got caught in their heels, a right side defence. Tim Simona. Francis Vatu. He scored the try. And it's 16-14 uh, for you Lapalia fans. I, I got Jonathan mixed up with his older brother, but his acting has been outstanding. And he's waved away. Difficult position from uh, Daniel Mortimer. But you mentioned uh, Matty Nable. Hasn't his acting career gone from strength to strength? Of course, he wrote and produced a movie centred around the Newtown side that Matty Johns was in. Absolutely. It's quite amazing watching footballers go into other roles, whether it's business and this time it's the arts and quite unusual really because as a young kid you either grow up being an athlete or what do you call it, an artist, uh, you know, you're acting or singing. Not many people have both skills but of course with all the Islanders these days they are wonderful singers. It's a tight one here, 26 and a half minutes oh, remaining and there's a exactly. knock on. The Jets lead 16-14. They won't want that. Mossy Masoy not happy. Well, Darren Lockyer alluded to this earlier. I mean, we told you how hot it was down there on the playing surface compared to everywhere else. I mean, you're, you're in this theatre here and the oxygen gets a bit thin down there and it's quite warm. 
and he said the possession would end up deciding this game. And you can tell now that the team with the ball uh, is making it very difficult for the defence. So you've just got to hold on to it and the points will come. Tigers are very dangerous from close range here. It's, it's hard to imagine they won't score again in this set of six. Trail by two. And they're one of the best players for them all day, David Harris in that white headgear. He's just a couple of metres away. Waters. Dane Chisholm, the young fellow who scored the try line. Oh. Pops the ball back to Harris. He's over the line, but he'll be pushed back. Politoni, the dummy half. There's Waters. There's Chisholm, the guy you speak of. That looked forward to me from Meany. It was. The referee pulls it back. But it was uh, a try for all money, wasn't it, if it wasn't? Yeah, it's a big call. <laughs> big call. I think what happened to the try, the, the nearly try, sort of cost it. spread out nice and wide. They had a good play of the ball, a tackle before. And the amount of mucking around online. Yeah, pretty obvious it was a forward pass there. And the, and the difference was that the Jets got off their line. They came up and bustled there and forced the issue where when young uh, when young Chisholm went through, they sat back and he was able to dictate turns to them. So the defence coming forward there forced the forward pass and it's a let off for the Jets. It shows how dangerous this Tigers side can be in possession. They've done really well at the Tigers club right throughout all the junior rep teams, the NYC team, and the New South Wales Cup team. So I know at the NRL level they've probably had a disappointing year and there's some changes coaching wise etc but there's a great depth and wealth of talent coming through that club. The arrival of Cup 2, Gussie, there's a couple of really good players coming through there. Uh, young Luke, oh, I'm telling you his name, Luke, Luke Hodge, you're, 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 you're talking about the Holy Cross, we saw the Holy Cross side. Holy Cross, yep, and mm. Andrew Johns said that he, the bloke you're talking about, said he's the, the most, a player that looks most like him as a schoolboy, and uh, I think a lot of the credit goes down to Warren McDonald, who's done an outstanding job as a recruitment manager at West Tigers, former first grade player himself. The Telstra NRL Grand Final, 4.30 this afternoon, Bulldog Storm. And uh, at half time, look out for this. The eighth immortal, Joey Johns, is going to arrive in a Blackhawk. That is something to look for. Is he flying? <laughs> he won't be is flying. Joey, is he It'll be controls? Jerry from um, Skippy. And he will join the other oh! li living immortals. That's a massive tackle on the field. So something to look forward to. Big hit by Mossy Masoy. Here they are. Balmain right eastward on the attack. Waters looks one way, goes the other, and he's piggyback to ground. It's been a good defensive effort from Newtown. Junior Moores to Harris, and he's wrapped up final tackle. At 16-14, Jets over Tigers. This is Waters with a left footer, and it's plucked out. He's knocked it on. And, uh, We've got a knock backwards. Sorry. Yeah, on. Boy, sorry. We've got a knock on here. Newtown. He's got a knock on Newtown. So, of course, the, the no, Tigers no, will get the, uh, the feed here. Well, their last three possessions, the Newtown Jets have turned the ball over. They turned it over on tackle one, coming out of trouble from the kickoff reception. Then a forward pass in the middle of the field when they had a chance to get out of their own end. And now he actually had this, but got hit in a hard tackle. There's Mozzie Masoy with the big shoulder check over the top. And... Um, Little one here, he should have caught it. Well, he actually did catch it, and then the impact of the tackle, he loses the ball. When you're not used to those sort of things in the game, you get very nervous when you see a ball just come over the top of it, over someone's head, into nice. your hands. It's a nice ball from Josh Davis, and Harris has got it again. He has been the ever ready bunny today for, for the Tigers. This back row, oh, he won't like that. Hasn't been on there long, Naya Avaro, Tegeli Naya Avaro in Jersey 15, and he's put it to ground. Now, you guys were talking about Matt Nabel before. Of course, he's Gary Jubilant in underbelly. Played eight first-grade games, four for Manly, in, or five for Manly in all in 91 and 92, three for South Sydney. Played over at Carlisle in the United Kingdom and the London Broncos there in 1997. Gary Jubilant, of course, is the character that he plays. I played in the New South Wales Catholic schoolboys team with uh, Matty Nabel. He was a tough guy. You, uh, I love that footage of you at schoolboy. When Kenny Sutcliffe came out to the school and you were eating a, out on the chopper. Eating a chocolate, a few pimples back then. Uh, so 
Oh, tell you what, modesty, one of your strongest qualities. It is 16-14, Jets over Tigers. And this is the Jets. What was it like playing back for Newtown? Gus, tell us about it, because we were schoolboys that went along to Henson and were there in 81 at the grand final. And you had some wonderful players around you. Etherington, Ryan. It was a very special time, and it didn't last long enough. And, uh, I got there the year that we made the grand final, and 18 months later, the club was broken out of the competition. So um, it, it was a wonderful time. You can imagine back there in 81, it was a, a group of blokes that came from a number of different clubs. Warren Ryan went out and recruited fellas, and we were sort of all thrown together. And uh, the chemistry between the blokes, the friendships that have lasted a long time since then, it was a very special place to be. The one bloke I love, Gus, he scored a try in the grand final was Graham O'Grady. What was he like to play with? The snake. Uh, snake was our minister for defence. In those days, your lock forward used to defend behind the defence line. So he would he would clean up everything else that everyone missed. And around me, there was plenty of that, so I was glad he was there. But he, uh, he was a really intelligent player. He could play virtually any position. Um, and... Uh, He's a great ball runner, wasn't he? A great balance. Yeah, very quick. Very quick, solid. Not a big fella. Well, here we go. This is pretty attractive. They're in play. trouble here. Mate. They're in he trouble. made a mistake before. Does he get there? That was Tagelli Nayavaro. They'll go upstairs and have a look. Then we'll get back and uh, break down the 81 grand final because they had some setbacks, particularly in the front row before that 81 grand final with Bowden suspended and... Other players injured. It's a great trivia question. Who were the front rowers for that Newtown 81 grand final? But here are the Tigers he looks, with a real he could, chance. He could be offside the play next to him, I think, in the head gear. That'd be Harris. And he's inside the 10. It gets bunted back. This is Waters. Look at this kick. Look at the angle he gets on that. He's facing straight down to the corner post and gets it back to the left upright. And there he is. Big number 15 made a mistake before oh. Avaro. All will be forgiven. If no, he, it's a draw. Uh, no. no, he couldn't have no. had control there. No, you don't need any more looks at that. Otherwise, they'll confuse themselves. Who's up there in the box? It's Stephen Clark. I've got to say, if you went back to the actual kick, oh the fella dear. in the headgear. Oh, dear. Now I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Gus is shaking you. Stephen Clark, of course, the hand of Kieran Foran. And Phil Cooley's there with him. Well, he drops it there. Yeah. That cannot be a try in any game of rugby league, can it? I wouldn't no, think. No. Here but we go. Here we go. Hold your breath, folks. No oh. try. No try. No See, try when you drop them to reserve grade, they do improve. <laughs> He's been dropped two grades, I think. Yeah. It's a good game, this one. Jet 16, Tigers 14. We're talking about Graham O'Grady and, uh, of course, that front row, Gus. S Steve Blythe. When you're ready. Craig Ellis, Barry Jensen, and there was the big fight with Bowden and Broadhurst, and he was missing, and of course he was a, a major player in that go for the grand final. Yeah, well, Steve Bowden, he was, he was out in the second week of the semi-final series. There was a, a big blue in the early stages of the Manly game, and he got sent off and suspended. Um, Steve Blythe played with fractured ribs in the grand final. Just stood around at training all week doing nothing, just giving orders, and but on the day, extremely tough me and Stephen Blyton. Uh, he played with fractured ribs That's in that cool. game. Stand up! Uh, a very special group of players. Very different. Of course, our, our captain is uh, the great Tommy Rodonikas. It was an experience to play with him. Yeah, and, and your second row partner, Mick Pittman. Wonderful player, Mick Pittman. Uh, Mick and I ended up at Canterbury after that. Uh, but he was, uh, he was a really great back row forward. A couple of decent wingers in Blacklock and Ferguson and Ryan and Hetherington in the centres. It was a pretty good football team. Kenny Wilson coming off the bench that day. A very intelligent side. Uh, Mick Ryan and Brian Hetherington were, were, were two great players. It was a teacher, Brian Hetherington, the, I think. Yeah, so real, real, real students of the game. and It was just a chemistry team. And Ken Wilson, um, I'd, I'd started my career at Penrith and Ken Wilson was there. and Ken was the one that encouraged me to go to New Down. And, Ken came off the bench in that game as he did through all the final series. He was at the back end of his career by that time. And, uh, they, they were just great people. Um, real men. And, uh, it was a very special time. And as we saw, Parramatta would go on to win the next three grand finals up against the Sterling, Cronin, Ella, Kenny, Price. Yeah, we weren't beaten by slouches. <laughs> they could play. 
And of course, uh, this is the final tackle for the Tigers. Freddie cannot wait for the Big Brother this week with a stack of 90-minute specials. Tomorrow, it is the search for a superstar as the housemates put on the Big Brother talent show and on Tuesday, the very first all-female eviction. That's Big Brother. Do not miss it. Freddie won't be. Now, of all the shows I've ever seen on TV, of, of all the things, you know, it's the one show I think would really suit Freddie. I, I think if, if we could somehow find a way to get Freddie into that house, that that could be his call. Really. I could see him sitting on the couch with his tracksuit pants and a packet of twisties. That would be it. Yeah. Now, Freddie, of all the reality of television, I'd say, well, this show's got Freddie written all over. That's a Tell you what, someone else will be tidying the room. This is Newtown centre field. The last thing we want is Andrew Johns in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Little hairy man running around with no gear on. <laughs> That's, they're, the, they're my recollection to have an Andrew as a roommate. <laughs> we're, st we're still a G rating as Agar takes it forward. Two point spread here. Jets 16, Tigers 14. It's just great saying that. Two wonderful names of rugby league and rugby league history. Uh, had Mortimer in the back and to give you around the stomach and that's Ray Cashmere probably the last time we've seen Ray Cashmere he's been a, a real workman had a lot of first grade as Yosefa goes from nothing to something dynamic player here they go Chisholm with a chance it's tidied up nicely they'll get the ball back though He's made an impact, hasn't he? Yeah, they're grinding away here, the Tigers, and the more and more defence that Newtown have got to do on their own line, it's going to make it difficult for them. But uh, nothing between it. Here's the Canberra Raiders, by the look of it, warming up in the dressing room downstairs. Yeah, Vossi and our boys are warming up for the call of this one. The, the, the Raiders and West Tigers. They're a good side, the Raiders. They did a number on St George last week. Edric Lee had a big say in that, the big left centre. You'll, you'll spot him easy out there. There's a dropout from Daniel Mortimer, and uh, how much of this uh, can they stand? It's been a very good defensive effort. There's been a couple of opportunities from Balmain in the last few minutes. The Toyota Cup competition was very closely fought too. There wasn't much between the top eight and nine sides. But the Canberra Raiders, for mine, have looked like the likely winners for most of the year. So we can actually see how that plays out. Here's their chance down the short side. Balmain right eastward. It's a warm and a beautiful day for football. They spread it. They've got a good back line here. The Tigers, Waters out wide. Set move, and it's on here through Meany. Meany gets it away to Josh Davis, and he's scored in the corner, has he? They'll go upstairs. They'll look to see if he's put a foot in touch, but uh, doesn't look like it from where we are. Yeah, that looks like a try, no doubt. What beautiful hands by Davis. Got a nice pass. Here he is. Left foot's in. Yeah, that's a try. Just ducked inside Daniel Mortimer. Well, the Tubu come up out of the line, and once he did that, it ended up being a three-on-one. And it was Davis who did the great job of staying inside the left touch line. And Mortimer couldn't force him over. He's Chisholm out the back. No, it's Meany. There's Tubu found way in field. Nafi Selawini just couldn't break this down. He had to leave a bit early, I think. Nice job there by Davis. Grand final day, 2012, Josh Davis. And he did an outstanding job to get the ball across the line. Two-point game here. Difficult kick for their captain, Meany. He's been solid all year, Sean Meany, both in this grade and when he's had to be uh, playing first grade. And that's going to be waved away to the left-hand side. So it stays two points in it. And let's get to Darren Locke here on the sideline. Lockie. Yeah, take a look at these first three passes from the ruck. I mean, they're as good a spiral pass as you'll ever see. As we see it coming here from the dummy half. There's one. There's two. And there's a third. Almost fiddler-like. But look, just that 
getting that ball wide early put the pressure on the Newtown defence and that made the, the error for Tupo to come out of the line. And Davis, who looks quite lame down here, gets the try. You can see there the influence. Uh, I mean, that may as well have been Robbie Farah throwing it to Molson, throwing it to Benji Marshall. Exactly the same structure you see in the NRL team at the West Tigers. And it filters down right through all their grades. You watch all their junior teams played. They're all very adept at that long spiral pass. And they're one of the teams in the competition that like to go to one sideline and then attack way over on the other sideline at the end of those three passes. And some teams play differently, but that's a feature of the Tigers and it's right through all the grades. They've been a similar style later with the Bulldogs, but they don't go one, two, three. They have a forward who takes a forward from one sideline and go out the back and out the back. That's a knock on. Gets to the same place in a different manner. Knock yeah, on, that's, a, that's a mistake that's uh, going to help Newtown. They've been under an absolute barrage by the Tigers. We've seen the one try. They're still only down by two. Well, the Jets have been in a lot of these close finishes in recent times, and they've come out the other side to win all of them, to advance through to the grand final. So it's not foreign territory for them. It's whether or not they can produce the winning play on the big day. The Tigers have got their nose in front. Two-point lead's a nervous lead at any time. You lead by two and four points. You, you, know, you feel nowhere near as comfortable as you do leading by six. There's a good run from Carney. Yeah, under... 12 minutes remaining in this one and it's uh, the Tigers just with their nose in front. Newtown in a very good position. Selyawini will go to dummy half here. Has a nice little run. He's got great footwork, Selyawini. Round one, round two, inside ball. And uh, it'll be brought to ground, Isaac Liu. 25 out now from the Tigers line as Selyawini has another dart himself. Haven't had to uh, defend much in the past 20 minutes or so, the Tigers. Mortimer. Short ball there, two metres away. Final tackle. We've seen a try scored in similar circumstances down the other end of the field, but it doesn't get to Mortimer. They'll keep the ball alive through Alamai. It's alive again. Oh, he's called it forward. Tough call, probably, but... Now, that's one bad pass at the start of that play, and it interrupts the whole flow of it because everyone is actually in front of the ball or everyone you want to pass it to is in front of you, and they're trying to, to get the ball to go backwards to a man who's standing in front of them. It's impossible. But it all starts from the one bad play, or the one bad pass at the start of it. Generally leads to others. Oh, big hit from Alamore. And there's a knock on. So there's their knock chance on. again. Jared Farlow knocks it on after the big tackle from Josh Alomar. And that's an example of how you can turn momentum of the game with your defence. Someone coming out of the line like that, putting a big shot on, forcing the turnover, can really change the momentum of a game. And in big games, it's these plays that make the huge difference. Watch the steady progress of this young guy, Josh Alomai. Started up there in Newcastle with Hunter at school and played in the Toyota Cup and a lot of ability, big and fast and strong. That was a beauty. He picked his mark, Tim Simona, too. He's got good footwork. He never missed. That was a great tackle. Here's to give it. Most of New Down's success today has come out wide and uh, down the edges of the field. So we we'll looked at them sort of set up in the middle and try and put a play on down the edge. Only on their last set, Gus. They never really got in position for anything, did they? They seem to be now fanning it now to get nice shape down the left. Yeah, Selyawini had three runs in that set. And here he goes again. He picks up Mortimer. He picks up Kara, and he goes close. He's still pushing. He's still pushing. Tackle Just three. Up, tackle Held three. up. You know, the defence was happy to Tackle just let him roll back into the end goal here once they had the ball secured. And now they get a little bit of a rest and 10 metres. The play of the ball goes back 10 metres, so they, they actually pulled him into the end goal. Let's play. Tackle three. Just to interrupt the flow here. Mortimer. Shows inside, goes out wide to Lou. Just two points in it, nine minutes remaining. 18 Tigers, Jets 16. Centre of the field through Seluini. Gets it to Mortimer. Tries himself, but there's three blokes bring him to ground, including Harris. Final tackle, Mortimer's out of it. Goes himself, Saliawini. He scores the try, and they are in front of the Newtown Jets. It is 20 points to 18. He's played a big part of the last five minutes, and he gets the try. 
A very sharp out of dummy half. Just mentioned he'd had a number of runs, but the last thing they were expecting was tackle five. That little Nafi would show and go and, and dive in under their legs. He's standing up. He looks for all money as though he's going out the back to his kicker, but some some defence there that just wasn't concentrating. And Nafi Seluini spears in for the go-ahead try. Have a look at the play of the ball. Daniel Mortimer goes sideways here. It doesn't look like a very good play of the ball. They've sort of missed out the referees. And Nafi throws a little dummy. He has a look up just before he picks up the ball like he's going to shift it and slides in under the defence. There's Nafi Seluini. He's dynamite out of dummy half. Leads change four times, the Guru just told us, in this second half. Mortimer approaches it and he kicks it. It's a four-point lead now. 22 points to 18, Darren Lockyer. Yeah, both teams are getting tired, and what you want is your dummy halves coming out with plenty of intent. Say when he does that, gets Mortimer close, but look, the Tigers' defence are just tired here, and look, the markers Stay went to sleep boys. here. Don't Say when he takes control. Now, the last two tries that the Jets have scored, they haven't been able to complete that set after the kickoff, so let's see how we go here. Six minutes 50 left on the clock, and it is Newtown in front. What is their psychology here, Gus? You can't go around protecting leads. No, they've just got to keep playing right to the 80th minute. Oh, boys, um, no shooting. As I said, this side has been beaten in golden points in grand finals in the last two appearances in the last five years, so they know what it's like to go down to the wire in a tight one. I was talking to Barry Vining downstairs. I said, today's the day, mate, the Jets today. And he just had that hopeful look on his face to say, oh, well, it's just nice to be here. <laughs> that he would love to win. <laughs> There'll be quite a party if they do. Yeah, it's uh, the brother of Terry Madison, of course, coaching Newtown here. And Terry, fine career himself. That Alamoy tackle, Alamai tackle, whichever way you want to pronounce it, that, that really was a turning point, wasn't he? Absolutely smashed him. They got the ball back and said when he made the most of it. Yeah, well, it certainly changed the momentum there, didn't it? It gave Newtown the opportunity and they took it. Now it's up to someone from the Tigers. And they... Could be the turning point, or this could be. Well, here's a chance now. Flying down the sideline. Trying to tidy things up. I think he'll get there, Simona. Is it? Yes, it is. Tim Simona still running. Eventually <laughs> Great game. piggyback to ground. That's why I love this game. <laughs> Well, that, what about no, your man from New Down? How's he going now? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Like, it, it, it could be the turning point or it may not be the turning point. You just don't know. That's why he didn't want to get carried away with it. In Newtown. Now they need to tackle like their lives depended on. Five minutes remaining. Harris charges forward. Three tackles gone. Balmain right eastward through Waters. Shows inside, goes out wide, and there's Chisholm. Got these quick feet, this young bloke from Mullumbimby. Five metres out, two tackles remaining. Balmain right eastward through Waters. Waters looks inside, good tackle. Oh, that strong defence. Wow, well, I bet he wishes he let it go. Last tackle now. Here's their chance, Balmain right eastward. Oh, he scores! He's going up to the video Who referee, but Chasers? Gus Iger, the Thank you, mate. he wants the grounding. It was Junior Moores that kicked it. What a beauty. The front rower. He went straight up to the video. Throws ref. a dummy and drops it on the right foot. They're all on side. Grounding. And dropped it. Oh. <laughs> no contact there, baby. He's dropped the grand final. Stephen Clark, of course, will make a decision with this with uh, Phil Cooley. Surely no try. Here's the decision right now. No try. No try. Walk on. 20. Four and a half minutes remaining. <laughs> Has he just... I'm just picturing the emotions of your, your friend from Newton. <laughs> was never in doubt. In the middle, Daniel. You must be in the feeling middle. a little bit, Gus, a bit of nostalgia. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, it's just great to keep seeing this jersey keep going around. And it's, Stand up. It really oh, is the, the highlight team of the of the New South Wales Cup. Everyone refers to, to the Newtown Jets and, and move. people that keep this club going. I would love to see them win a premiership here today. So many people that live in and around Petersham, Lewisham, those sorts of areas love getting across and sitting on the hill with their family. 
and watching Newtown home games, that's a very good run from Tupo. And the ball will splash back and it's in the hands of Lou. He's called a penalty here. And uh, now here's Newtown's chance to, to get downfield and control it. Yeah, well, you find touch here and three and a half minutes left to play. A try will close this out. If they can uh, score in this set of six, the Newtown Jets will win the New South Wales Cup. He's going to take the tap. I find that extraordinary. Anyway, just giving up time and metres there. But I won't, You can't really see from here, but I know when I walked into the ground this windy. morning, it was very windy, so... Maybe he felt he wasn't confident in taking on the breeze. Shelly Weenie, he's certainly been an impact player for the last part of the second half. As big Mossy Masoy. Just one interchange to go for Newtown. Tigers have got a couple. And there's Lou. 22-18, Jets over Tigers. Two minutes 45 remaining is a mistake. There's a mistake. They'll try and... Stop the play as quick as they can. Well, that'll get your heart pumping. Masada, you've got the football. Walk away. That's, a, that's an awful mistake at this stage. There's still plenty of time. We've seen that many games this year decided in the last 10 seconds, let alone two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes will feel like an absolute age for the Jets, but that's, uh, that's poorly handled there. Let's hope it doesn't come back to cost them, although Tigers fans will be saying... You beauty, we get another chance. Masada and Mossy. I know Mossy's a lot bigger, but Masada, <laughs> I think he can hold his own young Masada. And here they are, Tigers, last throw of the dice, maybe. Well, they've got the flair to do it, the Tigers. They can score from anywhere on the field. We saw that in their previous set of six. So, yeah. There's a penalty, that'll help things. Oh. Well, they're going to be really under the pump here now, the New Down Jets, because the Tigers, they've got some tricks up their sleeve. And everyone's tired out there. The hardest thing to be doing in these couple of minutes is defending. Yeah, Chisholm finds touch. He, just on two minutes remaining in this one. It's 22 the Jets, 18 the Tigers, and they are in possession. Working their way over the halfway line. There's Waters. Crack a set play to Simona and uh, almost throws the ball back but hangs on to it. It's actually Junior Moores. There's Waters again. Masada Yusefa shows inside, inside, spreads it out to Chisholm. He gets missed in the tackle and he's still alive. Oh, That's a beauty. Good shot. That's a great tackle from Kara. He's normally a hooker himself. They need to stick strong Newtown with the Tigers. Four tackles gone. 30 metres out from the Newtown line and Waters. Waters gets a bit, oh, mixed up with another player. Ball goes forward. Surely now Newtown can control things. They'll have the feed. Well, you would think with just on a minute left in the game and possession, Newtown only need to hold on to this, kick it out over the sideline, and it'll be their team that heads off on a victory lap. And this has been a long, long, long time coming for the Newtown Jets. The last major competition they won I think was a Wills Cup back in 1973 long long time ago put your head in lock put your head in now Nathan well, they tried to push him off it didn't they your mate uh, was it was it Mr Viney Gus it's uh Barry, the heat. Barry, Barry Viney He'll be right, mate. Win, lose, or draw. He's just happy to be here, isn't he? He's just happy to be here. I think he'll be celebrating with a libation, Barry, yeah, because they've got 40 minutes remaining in Newtown. This mighty, mighty club. Gus, of course, played with them. Foundation clubs, both these two. I'm wondering how they'll react, whether they'll all race out onto the field. And... Let's hope they don't burn down the stadium at Henson. There's Mortimer. Just chewing up time, running around, running backwards, running forwards. Thinks he's back home on the, the vines of the Mortimer's winery. Last 10 seconds. We make beautiful wine too. Last 10 seconds, 7 seconds. Newtown controlling things. He's had a good game, Ahmed Elaz. One second, there's the siren. Newtown has won the 2012 New South Wales Cup.
They got out in front, they led 12 mil. We saw four changes of lead in the second half. This mighty, mighty club, beautiful blue jerseys, and Phil Gould, as a member of this alma mater of Newtown, there'll be some happy people in the inner city. It's absolutely wonderful for the people that have kept this club going for so long. As I mentioned, they got tipped out of the major competition back in 1983. And, you know, they run on the smell of an oily rag and the love of people who just wanted to see the club going and see the jersey keep going around. They're the most hospitable team in the New South Wales Cup. It's a great day out at Henson Park. They make it a, a fun day for family and friends. And you know, all the other teams in the New South Wales Cup love hosting them when they come along because they just bring a special history and a special group of people with them every time and there's no wonder that there's great celebrations out there at the moment because this has been a long time coming they've been denied in their last couple of grand final appearances in golden point extra time they've had to go down to the wire against the tigers this will be very very sweet and she'll be a hot time in king street new down tonight baby it sure will guys like terry williams and others that have been involved in newtown to to keep this club ticking on they've uh, got great heritage jerseys Henson's a beautiful part of the world. Of course, the Newdown Jets are the feeder club to the Sydney Roosters. Most of these fellas have been provided by the Roosters Club, so it's it's great for their depth. They got to the preliminary final in the National Youth Cup, in the, in the Toyota Cup, and now they've won the reserve grade competition, so all goes well for the future of the Sydney Roosters. Uh, they too have had a change of coach during uh, the last couple of weeks, so uh, big things in store for the, uh, for the Roosters as well, but great for Newdown Jets. Have a look at them. 2012 Grand Final, the first piece of silverware goes the way of Newtown in the New South Wales Cup. Next, it's the Raiders and the Tigers in the Toyota Cup. And, of course, the big one from 4.30, the Grand Final, the Melbourne Storm and the Bulldogs. And can you believe it's just over five weeks now to the first test in our summer of cricket, Australia versus South Africa. It'll be played at the Gabba on November 9. The Windies and Sri Lanka will also feature against Michael Clarke's men in coming months. Cricket Australia is about to launch the series with this commercial headlined by fast bowler Peter Siddle. Here's a sneak preview.